So this is my uh, Rolay P355 flight projector. I bought it back in the 1980s, but it's been in storage for probably the last 20 years. I took it out lately to start looking at my slide collection again, and it's got a number of issues. So I looked on YouTube and there wasn't any videos about how to fix it. So I thought I'd make one, hopefully I can fix it. So there's two issues. When you switch it on, sometimes the fan, which is in here, doesn't turn because it's slow, slow time cranking up to speed. So that's obviously a mechanical issue. Also, when you try and shift slides, it barely manages to do it without it being helped. So obviously, needs a bit of oiling and TLC or something like that. So in this video, hopefully I can and fix the, the issues. First thing is, of course, remove the power cord. You don't want to kill yourself. Uh, this cover sits on a cast metal base. So it's basically just screwed down onto everything. So the first issue I have is how to actually get into the, the guts of this thing. The first thing I found out is do not take the, the cover on top of, otherwise all sorts of bits and pieces fall out when you're working on it. Next thing is take out the slide tray. <clears throat> and remove the front lens because that's obviously going from the insides through the cover. Put that somewhere safe out of the way. Now, the only thing holding the cover down is four screws, two on the side here and two underneath. And also the trick I found is you have to remove this, this frame that pushes the slides in now because that sort of traps the cover from coming off. So that's the first thing I'm going to do need a Phillips screwdriver. If you look at the, the slide put cover or slide um, frame thing, it's held with two screws. So you have to unscrew those. I have my glass as well. So that's free. Then you can push that all the way in as far as it can go, or at least past the edge of the cover. There's lots of screws on the projector that are painted with red paint. And you know, the obvious um, message on that is do not unscrew those. <laughs> They've got nothing to do with the cover. But there's two other flat screws here, black in my one, that are actually what's holding down the cover. So I'll unscrew those when you find this. I hate flat heads, these little... Oh, here we go. One there. One here. Okay, <clears throat> and lastly, before you can remove the cover, on this side <clears throat> you'll see two Phillips head screws on the, on the external. You'll get those. Much easier to get to with a with a Phillips head. <clears throat> Looking on the back, these two 
connectors, there's a DIN connector and a power socket connector, they're actually fixed to the inside. The only fi thing fixed to the cover is this power button. Also, the remote control wire that will have to feed through. So we'll just take that out now. So now the cover should come off. It came off before anyway. With a bit of manipulation. Yeah. side got to the apparatus so now I'm gonna to have to stop and figure out how to fix it before I get back to you. So um, in that last video I didn't capture the screws I was taking out properly because of the framing so just to show you the two screws on the bottom of the um, projector you have to take out are the black screws here and here and then you have to take out the two screws holding the slide push mechanism so we can remove that from the slide okay so I've had a, a quick look at it and um, for one thing Absolutely everything is soldered together. There's no quick connects anywhere to be able to disassemble it easily. That's a bit of a bummer, but I guess it makes it more reliable. I don't know. <clears throat> also, there's a card on the back where the power and connector comes in, which have two fuses on it. They're okay in this case, but it might be another reason why you're projector suddenly dies if one of those fuses goes. But obviously fuses don't go for no reason. That's probably why they're internal. So it might indicate a short circuit or a blown component. I see there's some capacitors on this power card too. Um, <clears throat> it looks like the whole mechanism is driven by the fan. Fan motor driven through this belt to uh, a kind of grub wheel that um, drives a big wheel that goes round here with a little um, gear which feels very very uh, there's a lot of friction there it's not turning freely I'm gonna guess it just needs a Touch of grease in the right place. Also, you can't see it on that view, but I just turn it around. The 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 slide that moves in and out to push the slides backwards and forwards is really tight. I mean, it's not it's not moving smoothly. I would guess again, it's just to get under there with some decent grease and. Um, Grease it up a bit. Uh, the trouble is, it's going to be a nightmare to get into because, like I said, everything around it is hardwired, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't know how I'm going to get around that. Um, like I said, when I switch, I now I've taken this drive belt off. The drive belt that drives the. Um, I can't do it right now. I could maybe try it. I'm not blowing myself up, you have to be careful. But when I start the motor now, it starts no problem at all. I've tried it any number of times, it doesn't stick. So I'm, I'm assuming the fan motor isn't the issue, it's the mechanics here that do the, the slide chaining that, that's been slowing it down because these are normally permanently connected together so any any friction in the mechanism here will obviously hold back the fan so I'm going to have to focus on this mechanism that's going to take me some time and I need to source some decent grease so I'll get back to you on that one 
So, after looking at the slide shifting mechanism, it looks like it's only held in place by two plastic brackets which have to be lubricated. One's here and one's there, down, down there. I figured that if I can loosen those, the whole slide shifter part should come out and I can clean up and lubricate the brackets. So that's going to mean taking two screws off on the base. Before I flip it over, I'll put masking tape holding down this light source here because there's a flip up lid that and all the uh, lens elements and everything are just held in place by basically by gravity and the fact that that's pushed down by the cover. So if I didn't have these, this tape holding this lid down, everything would just probably fall out. So hopefully that masking tape's going to hold so I can flip over the, the base, which we'll do now. So you can, two, you can see the two screws, this one and probably this one, must be because they're in line. So I'll just undo those now. Now, hopefully, the whole slide shifting mechanism can somehow or other detach. We have to see what's going on here. I'll come back later. So, of course, it wasn't as simple as I thought. It's impossible to get this thing out with all the other stuff in place. I did find a spring that was sitting under that or over that bracket which must add friction and it's got some real grungy stuff in it so it definitely needs cleaned and oiled. But to get access to this completely I'm going to have to remove the whole of this section here, the transformer which is held held down by four screws, the complete front lens assembly and the slide shifting mechanism with the worm gear. I think that's all going to come off as one big lump. Um, that'll give me access to everything from here and back. So there's going to be a few more screws to get off. As far as I can see the transformer's got four screws holding it down. The lens assembly has got a screw here and two down inside. Hopefully, taking off those seven screws, I should be able to take up and out the whole front section here. Because, like I said, it's all hardwired, so I can't disconnect one piece and then have to take it all. That'll give me a very good access to the the shifting mechanism which needs oil as well or greased and the slider. So we'll just do that. So now I've taken the screws out I'll tell you what I did. Um, the first thing is everything around the front here is wired in a kind of daisy chain. So to get everything out of the way I had to Take one more screw from underneath, which is holding this little solenoid down. So that's loose. Don't lose the washer underneath. Then I unscrewed the transformer, four screws. When you do that, you can lift it up out of the way. And then there's three screws 
here too for the um, actuation unit for the slider and one other one for holding down the lens and this screw here on the other side of the lens. So then you can move the whole lot out of the way. So that gave me access to the the, the slide in out mechanism, which was quite interesting. Um, the little plastic bracket on this side has no no spring and it's quite free to move. Unlike the one at the front where I showed you, there was here there was a bracket and also a spring underneath, which I think was adding most of the friction. It's really grungy on the bottom, sort of super old uh, grease, I'm guessing. Uh, so that's got to come off. I'm going to clean all this, make it squeaky clean. Let me see, where is that spring? Like I said, on the front, there was the plastic bracket it was there and also this spring and you can see there's grungy stuff I don't know if you can on the video but there's grungy stuff on the top of the, the spring probably making a lot of friction and that sits right here sort of locked into the, the frame and you know to be honest it could be enough if you don't want to take all this stuff off. It might be enough if you just take a bit of um, spray lubricant. I'm using the CRC 556, which is incredibly good. I think it's even better than WD-40. <clears throat> Maybe um, just spray a little bit in the end of the of the the complete assembly, maybe drag out the, the slide shifting mechanism, wipe it off underneath and spray a bit of that under the bar so it gets onto that. That might be enough to solve the issue of it being so, so sticky. But now I've got this far, um, I'm going to continue and take a look at the you probably can't see it, but there's this worm gear driving a wheel mechanism, which is really sticky on my one. So I want to do a deep dive into this and, and um, well, you can see it actually, maybe re-lubricate this this worm gear with some newer grease because it's, it's really sticky. I hope you can see that in the video. It really is quite a lot of friction. That stuff is ancient. It's obviously 40 year old grease. The other funny thing on this was, although there's no, you can't really see what type of grease, it looks like they used a different grease on the bottom which has turned all grungy. But on the, uh, the, the shutter that covers the light when you shift slides, it really looks still quite nice. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it looks quite nice still. So they must have used a different grease underneath, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to grease up everything and then show you what I've done afterwards. Focusing on the worm gear drive, unit, which is this one driven by the belt. At first I thought it was a sealed unit, but when I looked under a microscope, well, uh, with a magnifying glass, my trusty old Swiss army knife, I found out that on the top of this axle in the middle, there was a tiny little circlip that you have to push off sideways, which I did Here's the circlip, oh I can't even pick it up, it's so small. 
if you can see my finger, that's the size of the circle loop. When I took it off, because you're pushing both sides of it, you've got no hands left over, it basically pinged off into space uh, and I nearly lost it, but it hit the wall. I, luckily I heard it hit the wall and drop. And after a half an hour crawling around the floor, I managed to find it. So when you're pushing that circlip off, I strongly advise having a piece of masking tape or something on the opposite side to where you're pushing to catch it, because it will ping off uh, unless you've got a better technique than me. Anyway, once you've done that, you can take off this spring and remove the front plate. And inside you can get access to the worm gear components. There's a kind of copper plate, I suppose that's for just reducing wear. The worm gear in the middle, the cog assembly or the cog piece just pulls straight out. I've actually already re-greased this. It was full of dried up grunge from the previous oil, gear oil. What I did was I used the CRC multi-grease, which is a lithium-based high-performance EP grease. You can buy it in tubes, like toothpaste tubes, at any good store. And so I found it available on RS. So I've already painted it on with a paintbrush. So there's a film over absolutely all the teeth. Once you've taken that out, you can lift up this cup just a little bit and that allows you to remove the I won't do it but the worm gear assembly just lifts straight out then up the way and out and there's the worm gear and the two plastic bearings or whatever you want to call it on either end they clip off and I cleaned everything again I had to physically remove the old grease with a you know a bit of elbow grease because it was fairly well stuck on there it wasn't going anywhere after 40 years of sitting and re-greased the shafts put the clips back on re-greased the worm gear drive and put it back in and then you just have to push in the mating part and replace the <clears throat> cover. To do that, you have to lift back. There's a ratchet assembly here. So you have to lift that back. And this part goes out this side. Hmm. I have to push this out. Yeah. Okay. So it ratchets. <coughs> oh, I forgot the copper. <laughs> forgot the copper plate. Which I've also lightly, just with enough grease on my fingers to make it sort of slippy. That has to go back, obviously. Do the same trick again. To push the ratchet out, get the thing on. Okay. Put back the spring, you can see that there's a, a slot here which has to engage in a little plastic tap. And then I won't bother you with the uh, fiddly process of getting the circlet back on, I'll do that off camera, but you have to put the circlet back on in its groove on the shaft. So that's all 100% now. On the um, slide sliding mechanism, I've just basically sprayed it with CRC 556 just to sort of salt, dissolve the, the grunge 
a bit and I've wiped it off. I'm a bit um, skeptical about putting more of that grunge on. I think it might be easier just to use some CRC on this, same as WD-40. And I also cleaned this spring, this pressure spring, which has a bit of friction at the end here. Uh, I can show you that when I assemble it. So basically everything is cleaned and greased now and I'm, I'm ready for reassembling everything. Okay, so I popped the little circlet back. It went on, on a lot easier than it came off, actually. And now this worm gear mechanism feels really smooth, but no great friction. Um, I've got to put this slide mechanism back in, but I've tried a few times and it's incredibly difficult trying to get these brackets, especially this one, in. Um, when it's still on the slide slide mechanism so I'm going to take I'm going to screw down the brackets first I have to get this bracket here off there's one on the slide mechanism that's held by this big screw I don't know if you see it. it funnily enough it looks like somebody's already had a go at the screw but that must be when they were assembling it so I'm going to unscrew this armature here that take off that little plastic bracket and screw it all down then I'll have to put the whole slide mechanism from that side there so I'll do that and then um, get back to you so after a lot of fiddling around I figured out you cannot have these plastic brackets screwed in before you get the the slide mechanism in place they have to be free on the, the bottom slide just in order to get things installed so basically once you've got them on the slide but loose you have to slide it back into that frame so that it's actually lined up then you'll have to position the plastic brackets the worst one is the one that goes under it goes here because it's a bit fiddly to get in like that and this one like that okay and now we've got this able to slide so I'll have I'll have to secure those with the screws everything looks like it's in the right place and then it slides backwards and forwards and flips back backwards and forwards. But before I go on, I want to make sure those are secured with screws so they don't jump out or something like that. So I'll do that off camera and get back to you. Basically, you have to, I have to lift up the whole base and get them from underneath, which is a little bit tricky. It's not worth me showing you me fiddling around doing it, but that's what I'm going to do. Right, so now I've screwed the two brackets on from underneath so the whole mechanism can slide in and out. Now, if you remember the uh, the spring, which I think is just there to add friction before we go any further, before we get it, I'm going to put that spring in the, the front here. It basically just clips on the outside. And get it in. <laughs> Give up. Please. Okay. And did it. Okay, that took a little bit of fiddling around, so I had to. It was obviously catching on something inside. So I had to put it in at an angle so that it avoided the lip or whatever it was. Now, oh yeah, there's definitely more friction. Not, nothing terrible, but that does make it a bit more secure. So now I can begin to start to put the um, the front assembly on.
all the parts I took off I'll just make sure that all goes together and get back to you so first I have to put back the piece I unscrewed here which is what actually decides the direction of the slide movement and that has to go here but the, the screw uh, I don't know if you can see this, it locates in this plastic piece that gets sawn and actuated to it side on the slide direction. I have to make sure that it engages in the right place. And I'll have to take it back in again. And this has got a little spring washer underneath so that it presses gently down on the actuating part. So let's put that back hopefully in the right place. I don't think that's in. Doesn't seem right. Oh, it's not moving. Okay, maybe take two. God! <laughs> what am I doing wrong? There's a screw in, hopefully in the right place. Hmm. Yeah. Feels like it's going in there. to have it right up in the actuating part. So now it should flip to one side or the other depending on something or other. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's all the way out. So let's flip to this side and if I move that over no, you know, holding it Still the same. All right, it has to go reset all the way back in. Yeah, okay, you have to it has to go all the way back in to reset in the middle before it can change direction. But it looks like it's working now. <clears throat> so now I can put the transformer lens assembly on the actual worm gear mechanism back in. There's a, hopefully you can see it, I'm trying to reach around. There's a white tab on the worm gear assembly which has to locate obviously in this, this groove going up to be able to push it backwards and forwards. So I'll have to make sure that that tab, this tab here, is on the right side, you know, to engage and I'm putting the whole thing back. So I'll put the assembly in, in place now. Just care, just roughly. Yeah. Okay. On the end of the line is this solenoid, I'll we'll get to that at the end. And like I said, there's a tab that has to go and locate into the sliding part, which I've got. To be able to screw down 
The worm gear mechanism, I need to flip this transformer as far out of the way as possible. You can't see this, but now I've got access to the screw holes for the worm gear assembly and the one screw for this this lens. So I'll just go ahead and do that off camera and get back to you in a minute. Okay, good job. I turned off the, the camera because there was a lot of uh, cursing going on there. I hate these old-fashioned screws with just a flat head screwdriver. They're a nightmare to keep aligned. Well, luckily, the screws are magnetic. I don't know if you can see that. So it's, you don't totally lose them if you get a bit out of alignment. I didn't have much trouble, much trouble getting the worm gear part on because the screws were pretty easy to get to. But the one on this side of the lens assembly it was a total nightmare. Then I noticed that the place which that it locates into in the, uh, the lens assembly is actually slotted. It's not a hole, it's a slot. So I can actually start the screw in the hole with good access before I uh, have to tighten it up. Oh, that should make a, a lot of difference. So I'll just get everything out of the way, I'll try and get it in by hand. Oh, gee, that's still a nightmare. Need smaller hands. Okay, that's it. So just loosely started it. Oh, now I can actually, <coughs> famous last words, get this part of the lens assembly. I'll probably find another problem. Oh no, it went bingo. So then I can just tighten it up. So another top tip there from uh, experience. I'll tighten these other two up. So. Flat head excuse me. <clears throat> okay, that's everything tight. <clears throat> so I can put the transformer in place. Those screws are easy. And also, since I'm on the camera, I've put the solenoid back at the end of the line here. I'll just check it's actually in the viewfinder, yeah. Sorry, noisy chair. The, uh, the shifting mechanism just floats in the, in the coil. That's fairly easy. And look locates on there. And the other thing is don't lose the washer. There's a spacer under there to make sure the back end of the solenoid's spaced up enough. Hmm. Alright. I think this goes on from the underneath. This might be another off-camera moment because we're a bit of a mess. We'll see if we can do it. Yeah, right. Just from underneath. We can at least do it finger tight and then cinch it up. And I've got the whole thing back together again. So that's it. Almost. Almost there. I'll go ahead and put the uh, four transformer screws in and then we're nearly good to go. For some reason three of the screws had no washers on the top but one of them did. I don't know why, I don't know if they ran out of washers that day or what, but anyway. <laughs> I 
and all flat drive screws, sort of old style. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything, I can't believe it's going so, well I shouldn't say that, I'm, I'm curse myself now, but it seems to be going reasonably smoothly. Okay, the last thing I think is to put the the belt on. You can see it's been sitting a long time in the same position because obviously where the it's gone over the small pulley, it's actually deformed there. But still, it doesn't seem perished or anything. So it's obviously good good quality material. Let's just hope it works. Be careful not to twist it because it's a square section. It's a square section belt, and I have twisted it. They might have a twist there. Oh, now it's moving really. Really, it's like there's no resistance whatsoever. So, at least uh, mechanically, it looks promising. Oops, uh, I was getting a bit worried because there was one screw on the bench here and I had no idea where I'd forgotten to put it. But it's obviously on the other side of the lens assembly. Phew. That's all the screws I counted for for the inside. You can see this. Just edit it out, isn't it? I'm tempted to actually crank it up now and see how it works. Um, I'll connect the power and switch it on and, and get back to you. Maybe give me a demo of it actually working. Let me just check if it was still in view. Yeah. I'm going to disconnect the power cable. Disconnect the power cable from the other end while I'm sticking my hands all over the electronics here. I, I, I've taken off the the cover so it's easy enough to get it get it in. Famous last words. Okay. <coughs> Hopefully nothing blows up when I actually plug in the power cable. Switching on is a bit fiddly because the power switch is still on the back plate. Let's see what, okay, moment of truth. Oh, yeah, looks like everything is running fine. I'm not going to move it since it's open, but uh, 
everything seems to be turning. We'll see if the slide mechanism works. <laughs> yep. Okay. I better get switch it off before that masking tape on the uh, light assembly starts to fry. Take off the masking tape, the handy masking tape. It's already warm that I put on to stop. Because there's a flip up lid here that's holding a whole lens assembly in light. So when I was turning upside down with the cover off, the tape really helped. Okay, I'll get the cover back on and, and, and show you the, hopefully the whole thing working um, once I've got the screws in and everything. It's a reverse order of what I showed you how to open it, basically. Okay, so I put the cover back on. I have to say it was a, a nightmare getting it over the electronic card in the back. It has to be uh, very well placed in a couple of slots to make sure it doesn't go in the wrong way. So be careful with that. So then I put the four screws in, two on the side, two underneath, and I screwed on the shifter bracket mechanism on the outside uh, now it's time to see if it works it definitely starts a lot better and the fan goes at once and the uh, sliding mechanism works perfectly now and even goes in the right direction compared to the buttons so all in all, I think it's a um, hundred times better than it was when I started this. And I hope it helps somebody out there. Because I literally could find nothing else online about fixing the slide projector. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.